When I reviewed A Nightmare on Elm Street's Part 1 through 4, it was during those films' 30th anniversaries. Am I doing the same thing with Part 5, The Dream Child? <laughs> nope. It was kind of just a coincidence that was even happening in the first place. Plus, I got Freddy vs. Jason coming up in July, and I got plenty of catching up to do. I need to know why they're fighting! Elm Street 5 came out just one year after the release of Part 4. It makes sense it was rushed into production given the box office success of the Dream Master. Even the poster was sort of rushed. It looks kind of like the poster for Part 3, and I don't remember this happening in the movie. Is Freddy gonna be a dad? Oh, we should save that answer for Freddy's dead! Lisa Wilcox's Alice returns for Part 5, which has to do with Freddy being able to murder people through the dreams of her unborn child, I think? I've seen this movie a few times, and I always seem to forget a lot of details about it after watching it. Directing duties this time around went to Stephen Hopkins, who would later bring us Predator 2, and who directs the film in a much more gothic style than the previous films. Like a lot of the sequels, the movie still relies on plenty of dark humor, and is a showcase for a lot of top-notch special effects, which kept the series fresh and interesting over multiple sequels, <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing. But I have the feeling I'm still gonna forget about this film. They call it The Dream Child, but really the full title should be A Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Oh right, that one. Hey, wait a minute, why doesn't this one open with a quote? Am I gonna have to make up another one? This movie may eat those words, literally. <laughs> That's why the title feels last minute. They let the girl drawing with chalk at the beginning of part four come up with it. Never mind waiting until the movie starts. This one gets to the slasher movie sex within the opening credits. Forget Freddy vs. Jason. I'm waiting for Freddy vs. Silk Stockings. Hmm, our lead girl has a sex and nude scene? The hell kind of slasher movie's this? Something gross better happen. Ah, oh, great, the tub's hung over again. Look, you pay for the cheapest studio apartment, you're gonna have to deal with Pennywise the Clown fucking with you. And while you can store your belongings in the basement, it's gonna get awfully serial killery down there. Writing off of the revelations of Part 3, with Freddy being the son of a hundred maniacs from inmates raping a nun, the biggest question I have is, what the hell is the guy from Ford Fairlane doing here? Wrong sequel to a Rennie Harlan movie. We learn more about the asylum in this film. For instance, it had lousy busboys. And this explains why Amanda Kruger is a zombie now. Look, Alice, you're still gonna have nightmares in the pre-Freddy resurrection scenes. They'll just have significantly less burn makeup. In truth, Freddy really isn't in the movie, as evidenced by this opening scene from Less Than Zero. The movie's all about Alice coming home on break and finds that everyone is addicted to sleeping pills. While Kristen's mom isn't in this, we still get another bitchy mom. As far as Lenny Luther goes, though, his dad did not show up for graduation. The love interest from Part 4 is back, too. I can't remember his name, so let's call him Gil. Gil gives great advice. Look, if you don't dream him up, he can't hurt you. Or us. Remember? You're right. See? Just don't dream! Why wasn't anyone trying this before? If only Jimbo had suggested, hey, when Jason stabs you, just don't die. Ooh, and Drunk Dad is back. I was afraid you weren't coming. I don't know what mom is. I, I watched from behind the stands. Like Fred Krueger, it's best that he doesn't set foot on school grounds. They're just dying to play John Parr's St. Elmo's Fire. Which one's gonna be the cokehead? But something is still haunting Alice. Shit, I forgot to invite the creepy dead kids to my graduation. These movies would be a lot shorter if you stopped following creepy things into creepy places. 
Freddy's mom would stay and talk to you, but she's really late in giving a lecture at Hogwarts. The killing people in their dream spell is going much darker than anticipated. All this Amanda Kruger stuff is making me think, what the hell happened to Dr. Neil Gordon? I probably shouldn't cut back to me right now, because like the main characters in this film, it's easy to get lost following this. <laughs> Congratulations, Amanda. It's a horror movie icon. Freddy was not only born with the Burns, but he's also the long-lost brother of the unborn. After Freddy was Dorian grayed to death in the previous film, clearly the only thing that can bring him back is if Alice dreams of Freddy as a baby and the fetus climbs into his old clothes. I mean, obviously, that was in the rule book from the very beginning. It's a boy! Oh, just point another mirror at him. Freddy needs a stern talking to. You brought me back to give you life, but now I must take yours. We'll see, bitch. I'm not sure I like Rob Zombie's version of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And if this film doesn't end with Freddy's mom grounding him, then that's just bad parenting. Alice is realizing that she doesn't quite have the same powers as Kristen, in that Alice is still played by the same actress. The diner, however, has been recast as a steak and shake. Freddy's would have been too on the nose. Now to get to know her friends better, or is this just the members of Animotion? I'm not sure. Like Roach Girl from Part 4, we find out Brock of Seagulls here is afraid of blood, which clearly means he's going to be killed by gravy. Let's get some good Gotta Save Alice music. Why are they using the video game music? Hmm, this movie is spoiling the husband's death from Wes Craven's new nightmare. Though props to Freddy for buckling himself up with his own arm. Gotta obey the seatbelt laws. Oh man, I'm back where I've started. Got to get to Alice again. <laughs> Don't forget the video game music! Unfortunately, he picked Murder Cycle. Now he can join the Kristen, Kincaid, and Joey club of... Well, at least we made it through one movie. Alice sees Gil's death by looking directly into Freddy's anus. But at the hospital, they have to break it to Alice that Dan's name wasn't really Gil. Don't worry, young lady. You're gonna be fine. Trust me, I'm a game show host, and I can give you excellent warp whistle tips. Upon finding out that she's also pregnant, she's still wondering whether or not she should go back to the red hair. And why on earth did you put creepy kids on your visitors list? What's your name? Jacob. Really? I've always loved that name. Blonde or red, that kid definitely wants to eat her hair. Greta, meanwhile, is dealing with creepy dolls and a mom who desperately wants her to become a model by essentially starving her. On the plus side, her mom gave her the advice to change her name to Selena Swift and to try out for Invitation to Love. Uh, another Freddy movie, another scene of clueless young people not knowing who Freddy is. He got caught, but the courts cut him loose on a technicality. So, the parents of the murdered kids got together and killed him. I know! And how do they not know this? And you know the Lost Boys! How are you scoffing? Simply Ned has a great idea. Vision as the Punisher can stop him. She's actually crying because she's getting tired of her dad's drunk guy jokes. How was the meeting? Sobering. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Dietz's house, we're going to recreate that Harry Belafonte moment if we have to throw a dinner party every night. Aren't you eating? I really don't feel up to it. But that's why we diet, dear. This movie feels like a Tom Petty music video is going to break out at any moment. This is actually an explanation for the fat snob years. 
I haven't slept in six years. Take that, dreaming! Unfortunately, she dies before I could make a Meaning of Life reference. <laughs> Greta? Huh. Well, the night wasn't a complete failure. need to go to our last resort. E. Edward Gray from Secretary. He'll kill Freddy by treating him like a horse. In this film, it's easier than usual to predict who's gonna die. But he got to Dan and Greta while I was awake. How's he doing it? Why don't you two stick to reality? Why don't you shut up and let her talk? Calm the fuck down, Frankie goes to Springwood. This comic book foreshadowing isn't looking good. It's really gonna run up the movie's budget. Makes sense that he'd want to die in an AHA music video. I think I know the rules of this universe. If you get an idea, just try it. It'll probably work. Also, don't trust this kid. He's gonna grow up to play Charles Manson in a movie. By the way, Alice, if you haven't realized it yet, this is your son from the future, and he may also be Damien. And you idiots should already know about Freddy! Holy shit. He's really real, isn't he? No, he's fake. All this stuff happened by accident. Time to go to the hospital to find out if she'll really give birth to the children of the corn. Is that why you're here? To see if your baby's having nightmares? No, we're here because we got really good at playing Ninja Gaiden. Unfortunately, this is how most of us 80s kids found out about how babies are made. Through electricity! This is the darkest opening credit sequence of any of the Look Who's Talking films. Feeding time! Soul food for my boy! <laughs> you already used that soul food line in part four! Then again, I've reused the safety word is bitch joke, so what do I know? If only you could all work as a team! Why don't you take off? Lee Springwood, cool off somewhere for a while. God damn it, Yvonne, you don't just run away from this guy. He finds you in your dreams. Hello, member of Human League here. Will you acknowledge me? The movie surprisingly stops to have a conversation about whether or not she should get an abortion, which at least makes it a better abortion movie than Voiceless. Dan's parents even show up wanting to take the baby away. But there is more at stake here than just your feelings. You're not taking my baby. Well, the courts might not agree with you. Why is this turning into a Lifetime movie? Supposedly, Amanda Kruger hung herself, but they couldn't find the body, and her soul is doomed to flashback sequences. Lame. Bring on more dead teens. God damn it. Even the death scenes are confusing. Is this a Count Chocula commercial now? This I understand. Don't dive in raw sewage. You could possibly find a creepy burn victim there. <laughs> At this point, I guess that could probably kill him. It doesn't. Of course, if we just read the comic book adaptation, we'll know how everything ends and we can defeat Freddy! But there still needs to be an aha reference. I didn't say it would be take on me. Gotta escape this Madonna music video. I'm not cut out for this. Get me to a Baltimore set. Finally, the one hero who stands a chance at defeating Thanos. Time to die, you Scarface limp dick. Well, that's just lazy writing. Freddy even becomes Super Freddy. Can't wait for all the articles to talk about how hot Super Freddy is. I'm getting serious Jason X flashbacks. Only if instead of Jason punching the robot's head off, he turned her into a comic book. Told ya! Comic books was bad for ya! That's what happens when you take your murder victims out of their plastic covering. And I thought he was gonna die from gravy! Meanwhile, at this giant painting of Shutter Island, Yvonne searches for more clues. 
You were in people under the stairs. You know which part of the house to look in. Alice, however, is giving Freddy a piece of her mind. I don't know where you are, devil. Jesus is the Lord of this house. And that means there's no place for you here anymore. You can't have my daughter. And you sure can't have my man. Ooh, Freddy don't got his butt kicked. Ah, uh, they don't make baby carriages like they used to. In the 80s, anything could stab you. Wait, is this in the rule book? Freddy has to be prison raped? Well, now he's even worse than when he was a person. There's 10 minutes left, so of course he's still alive. He's convincing Jacob to do a creepy kid off against Glenn from Mad Men. And the cinematography is going more off the rails than the killer. Dan? Now come with me. I'm sorry, is this movie entering itself into an art show? I'll pay $10,000 for it. What's this kid gonna do to help? Lead them back to the pet cemetery where he came from? Where is he? Inside you, where he hides. I hope we're talking about the same thing. Oh, Freddy's literally inside of her. I don't know what's happening, but I'm impressed how it's happening. All right, Yvonne is still in this. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Norman Bates's mom. Now Amanda Kruger's soul is free. I guess that means something. It freed Jacob to annoying kid him to death. Let's go. I want to learn stuff from you. She's no fun anymore. Teach me. Shut the fuck up, Charles Wallace. Obviously, to defeat Freddy, a giant hardened turd must escape the kid's mouth and pierce Freddy's chest, causing him to grow soul tentacles. I mean, <laughs> duh. Oh no, now he's gone forever. And we both have babies now. No, that was the good twin. Congratulations, Alice. It's a giant burrito. I'm sure everything will turn out fine for them. Sans more creepy dead children. <laughs> I've already forgotten about this movie. And was that Vincent Price? With audiences and critics reacting negatively towards the film, citing the confusing plot, while still commending the film for its special effects, The Dream Child became the second lowest grossing movie of the Elm Street films. However, it still brought in a profit of nearly four times its budget, making another sequel certainly inevitable. Though they waited two years to do part six instead of one. That doesn't mean the Dream Child wasn't an award winner. It got a Razzie for Worst Song, which went to Bruce Dickinson. Yes, THE Bruce Dickinson. Even though I'll be doing something else next week, I see that the next Elm Street movie is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Which of course means that it's the last one, and there were no more made after that. God damn it, I've used that joke before too. Damn it, Freddy the 13th, the final chapter! Do unborn babies dream? Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stone gremlin productions. Follow us on Twitter at the cinema snob or check out our homepage at the cinema snob.com.